Welcome to the WMNF Afternoon Call-In Show, The Last Call. I'm Sean Canan. In a moment, we'll open up the phone lines to take your calls at 813-239-9663. You can also email your questions or comments to dj at wmnf.org. Today our topic is the death in Sanford of Trayvon Martin. Joining us is Reverend Charles McKenzie with the Rainbow Push Coalition. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Well, here's what we know. Late last month, 17-year-old Trayvon Martin was shot in a gated community in Sanford. The self-appointed neighborhood watch captain, George Zimmerman, said he shot Martin in self-defense. But in 911 calls released this week, a child can be heard calling for help. The operator instructed Zimmerman to stop pursuing Martin. Zimmerman has not yet been arrested, but a grand jury will convene next week, next month rather. Sanford police say they have not charged Zimmerman because he claimed self-defense under Florida's Stand Your Ground law. Many people in the community are outraged. Martin's parents plan to attend a march tonight in New York City called the Million Hoodie March. So Reverend McKenzie, why is this case getting so much attention and why is it important? I think it's because uh, people uh, in Sanford and uh, the surrounding cities uh, in this state and across the nation recognize uh, that a very egregious uh, thing has taken place. A young man who had the right uh, to be in uh, that area, his parents, uh, father lived there, he was visiting them, uh, he had been to the store, he was on his way back, and uh, no self-appointed uh, person who feels like they can engage in this type of vigilante behavior or uh, this kind of aggressive behavior. And I think the 911 call, the eyewitness accounts, and the phone records uh, have uh, really made it clear who the aggressor was here. Uh, no one has the right to take his life uh, for no other reason than he was walking while black in this neighborhood. And I think that's essentially what happened. He was a young black man and it was assumed that uh, because he was in the area wearing his hood that he was up to no good and nobody has the right to make that kind of an assumption and certainly uh, something that would lead to this kind of an outcome. And People are outraged that uh, the person who committed this uh, has not even been detained. He's out free and uh, nothing has been done to uh, bring any kind of meaningful closure to this tragedy and I think there's a cry from the community and around the nation uh, that justice uh, be served. As you said, a lot of people are interested in this, um, and, and so I do want to take as many phone calls as we can tonight. So um, why don't we go to the phones now, and we can fill in the details that we know about as we go through yeah, the show. Just but let's go now to to uh, Brad in Tampa. Before I go there, um, you can call in too, 813-239-9663. If you'd like to join this conversation, you can also email us at tj at wmnf.org. Hi, Brad. Oh, we lost we lost Brad, um, but it, he, it sounds like he was going to say that the law, the Stand Your Ground law, is a tragedy and shouldn't be on the books. Uh, feel free to call back, Brad, um, if, if you want to continue to make that point. But we can we can go from there. And we have another person on, on hold. Uh, caller, you're on the air. What's your name and where are you calling from? Yeah, this is Art from Antioch. Hi, Art. Where's Antioch? Uh, All right, thanks. What's on your mind? Uh, 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 uh,